please stand now as we continue with the confession and forgiveness. In this new year, we again gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Almighty God in his mercy has given his only son to die for us and for his sake he forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of your sins in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now the entrance hymn.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord God, you revealed your Son to the nations by the leading of a star. Lead us now, I pray, to know your presence in our lives, and bring us at last to the full vision of your glory, through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 60, verses 1 through 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. And the nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather together. They come to you, your sons shall come from afar, 
and your daughters shall be carried on the hip. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and exult, because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall bring good news, the praises of the Lord. Here ends the first reading. The second reading is from the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. For this reason I, Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, on behalf of you Gentiles, assuming that you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you, how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I have written briefly. When you read this, you can per perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to the sons of men in other generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. The mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace, which was given me by the working of his power. To me, though I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to bring to light for everyone what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things so that through the church the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was according to the eternal purposes that he has realized in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have our boldness and access with confidence through our faith in him. Here ends the reading. Oh my goodness, we have so many children today. This is so good to see. Everybody sit on the floor, please. There we go. Chris Cross Alcohol. Thank you, thank you. Good morning. How are y'all doing today? Good. I have a question. Are any of you afraid of the dark? Raise your hand if you're afraid of the dark. Did I see any grown-up? Oh, I see grown-up hands go up too. Think back to when you were little. Were any of the grown-ups afraid of the dark when you were little? Yep, more hands went up. That is true. So it's it's true. Um, what is it that scares us about the dark? For those of us who are scared of the dark. You need some lights on. You need some lights on. Why do you want lights on? And 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 the so you can see. If the, if the people on the next part, they have to turn on their light so the people can see. That's right. We want to be able to see. We need to turn on the light so we can see. Because sometimes there might be a shadow, like a little bit of light will come through the window. And your little doll that's sitting up on your, on your shelf turns into this great big monster, right? So sometimes when it's dark, things aren't, you can't really see what they are and it's a little bit scary. <laughs> um, so most people stop being scared of the dark when they get older. Or nowadays we have this little thing called a what that we plug into the wall? Charger. A night light or the charger. Some of the chargers do have lights on them and we never charge things in our rooms, do we? No, things get charged downstairs, that's right. Some charger lights can be so we have these little night lights plugged into the wall that give us just enough light so that we can see. So if we get up in the middle of the night when you go to the bathroom, we don't stump our toes, right? So we what? have these night lights. Um, sorry, throws me off every time. Um, today we're going to celebrate Epiphany and talk about how the light of God appeared in the world when Christ was born and was made known to the world. So we still have a candle lit. You see the candle? So in a world full of darkness, it now has light. We say that, that, that Christ is the light of the world. Okay? Um, and as we, as Ms. Um, Robin read, a Hebrew prophet named Isaiah had written, Arise and shine, for your light has come. 
and everywhere else he also, he had also written, people who walked in darkness have seen a great light, and those who lived in a land deep of deep darkness, on them the light has shined. For all people who were lost in darkness and couldn't find their way to God. And Jesus came to be the light and to show us the way. So how many of you have ever woken up in the middle of the night after having a bad dream? Anybody woken up with a bad dream? So what usually happens if you wake up in the middle of the night with a bad dream? Maybe does mama come into the room, turn on the light, tell you everything's going to be okay, wait till you fall back asleep and then go back to her room? Yeah, and so we all feel a little bit better then when mom comes in. Well, that's kind of the same way um, with Jesus coming in. So we now know that Jesus is in the world and we have the light of goodness and salvation and that's been turned on into our souls and now we're not walking in darkness anymore, we're walking in light. So whenever you're tempted to do or say something that you know is wrong and you're getting ready to be in a little bit of darkness part of your life, it isn't... um, the darkness that you see, like the night and dark. Instead, it is a darkness inside which tries to take you away from God. But now we have Jesus to be our light. Whenever we wonder what is the right or wrong thing to do, we have the example of Jesus to show us the light. You know how you learn what Jesus would do? He talks light. What do we need to do to learn what, what Jesus would do in a situation? <clears throat> yes, sir. Go to church. Go to church. Read the Bible. Learn the stories of Jesus. Learn what Jesus did when he was on earth. Memorize Bible scripture so that if you get in a situation that's a little scary, you can go back and say, Jesus says he is the light of the world. Jesus said, don't be scared about anything. He will be there with you. So you learn those scriptures to help you to remember that he is the light and he is there to keep us safe. Okay? So let's fold our hands and repeat after me. Dear Lord, Lord, thank you for this day. day. Today we celebrate Jesus Jesus. as the light of the world. world. Help us as we grow grow. to read your word, word. to study you, you. and learn what you have taught us. For these things we pray in your name. Amen. gospel is taken from St. Matthew, the second verse beginning at, uh, the second chapter beginning at verse 1. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. And Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, 
they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. In being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. And this is the gospel of our Lord. Okay, dear saints, um, again, the Feast of the Epiphany, it always comes on January 6th, but we hardly ever get to celebrate it because it rarely falls on a Sunday. So we're doing Epiphany Observed, and that's what Observed means, we're just rolling it to the next Sunday. And of course, that's the twelfth and the last day of the twelve days of Christmas, the season of Christmas in which we celebrate the birth of Christ. Now, the Gospel reading on the Epiphany is always the reading of the Magi who have come to Israel. They're following a star, and they're looking for the one who is to be born King of the Jews. Truth is, we really know very little about these Magi. We know there was such a class of people, but we don't know if they were from Babylonia, which would have been Iraq, or from Persia, which would have been Iran. We don't know uh, what their names were, even though later in history they're given names. We don't know how many there were, and we don't even know how far they traveled. Um, and it's highly unlikely that they showed up at the night of Jesus' birth. In fact, Matthew makes it pretty clear that after Jesus is born they show up, and when they do find him, they find him in a house. So um, they come a little bit later on in the story. And though we call these Magi the wise men, um, in our Christmas plays, the Jews of Jesus' day would have looked upon them with some suspicion. Uh, one rabbi said Magi should be put to death. They were foreigners, of course, and astrologers, astronomers, charlatans. They didn't know the law of Moses. And so there was some suspicion of these fellows when they showed up, I'm, I'm sure. So then the question is, why do they even show up in the story of Christmas? Well, I think the answer, the most likely answer is this. When you, when you read Matthew's Gospel and it's full, they represent in Matthew's Gospel a hint of the Great Commission, which is at the end of the Gospel. Go make disciples of all nations. And they are the first fruits of the Gentiles who are to come to Messiah, which is what we're reading about in Isaiah's gospel today, aren't we? All of those camels coming in, bringing the wealth of the nations. And uh, though they knew little about the Jewish religion or the law of Moses or the temple worship that was so important to the Jews, yet they do stand as wise men for us, for there are three things that we read here that they are wise about in relationship to God. So let's look at that. First, these magi were uh, as the heavens spoke to them. They were looking for news of the divine, and they were keen to act upon it when it came. So these magi were passionate about God, about things divine. Now, we're in a new year, and um, quite frankly, I don't think this new year will be much different than the last two new years. It's going to be very much the same, I think. There will be more COVID. There's more social panic, right? There's more name calling. There's more government bullying. We've been experiencing this month after month after month. Same thing already in January of 2022. And it feels as if everything is still falling apart, a little bit disordered, a little bit chaotic, and just unclear, right? A simple little virus has revealed how powerless we humans are in God's great and mysterious universe. 
and though we play at being gods, and we do, the human race does, we aren't God. And so our little games of hubris and pride keep us from seeing what is truly divine in the world. But listen now, according to St. Paul in his epistle lesson, what is divine in the world is the divine one who has come into the world, Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is the one who reveals to us and roots us in the love of God. And again, I say it, love. The love of God, which is the very core divine character and nature of God. St. John's Gospel and St. John's Epistles tell us clearly, God is love. And love is something that only wills what is good. Don't you wish your government did that for you? And it only works for harmony and peace. That's what love does. So, we in this new year need to look beyond the chaos of the world and we need to seek the kingdom of Christ Jesus where God's love is found. Of course, that's true for any year, isn't it? True for any day. We are to see beyond the chaos of the world and to look for things divine. Where is the love of God at work? What is God doing in the world with that love? And how am I going to be a part of it? Second, the Magi, when they did find the divine in Christ Jesus, what did they do? They offered him their very best. And, and it wasn't only the three gifts that the Magi brought, which were all three of them very expensive gifts in the ancient world, but their very act of leaving their home country and taking a perilous journey shows that they were offering their lives to God as well. So now listen, there are many fearful things these Magi faced as they journeyed along the way, and I'm sure they had many difficult and uncomfortable days. But that didn't keep them from offering their lives and their very best gifts from God. And God's Christian people, that would be you and I, right? Called by the gospel, indwelt by the Holy Spirit and in communion with the living resurrected Lord of heaven and earth you and I cannot and shall not let the trials and fears of this present age prevent us from living our lives for God We've had enough of the COVID now to realize that in a certain way, it's, it's really nothing new. Any day can be our dying day, right? From this virus or a cancer or an accident or old age. So what? I just love how Pastor Rod likes to say this. You can't scare me with heaven. Right? Can I hear an amen? You can't scare me with heaven. So saints, you and I are called to live our lives for God in this new year. To give him our everything. It is our royal calling in Jesus. So how will you be Christ's witness in the world with your life this year? Now third, after finding God in Christ and offering him their very best and their lives, the Magi did this third thing. They let God direct their lives going forward. And you heard in the story, King Herod called them secretly and said, go find this child and then come back and tell me so I can worship him. We know how that ended out. But God said otherwise. And so they slipped out of the country unannounced 
ignoring the command of that wretched man of earth in order to obey the command of the God of heaven. The Magi let God direct their lives, and so should we. Story here. Beatrice Stevenson describes a Christmas that she spent with her husband, Dr. Theodore Stevenson, in a mission hospital in western India. Dr. Stevenson was a visiting surgeon at the Mirage Medical Center. Now, Beatrice was far from home and her children, and she was in a hot, dirty, smelly city that was very crowded, and she was very depressed and feeling homesick at Christmas time, and she felt like she could never celebrate Christmas in such an alien place. However, God surprised her at the Mission Hospital in a most memorable way. The Christian staff, and there weren't many, but the Christian staff at that hospital decided to present a Christmas pageant for everyone, complete with live animals, and they even borrowed a baby from one of the mothers in the maternity ward. And a crowd of townspeople, mostly Hindus, gathered to watch the proceedings and they uh, were watching, and the usual cast of characters, of course, were brought out for the Christmas play, the baby in the manger, and the cast that came around the manger, and the choir sang a Christmas carol, and then a young woman, one of the wise men, so to speak, wearing a white sari, that Indian dress, and with her nurse's cap, stepped onto the stage. She was a local woman who told the audience how she enjoyed being a, a, a Christian nurse and serving her Lord. And then she turned around and bowed before the manger. Then another local man, an Indian worker carrying a hoe, one of the maintenance staff mounted the platform and he too knelt before the manger. And then he announced to the startled uh, audience that he had once had leprosy and had been doomed to a life of begging, but the caring Christian medical staff at uh, this Mirage Medical Center had treated his disease and the doctors had performed surgery on his once useless hands, allowing him now to have the dignity of work. And then finally the third wise man stepped up and everyone recognized that it was the local surgeon, Dr. Chopade, who was wearing his operating room attire. The surgeon bowed low before the manger, then rising to his feet, he quietly faced the crowd and stated that no one present there knew that he had been born as a member of the lowest social and religious caste of the Hindu culture. That is, he was considered one of the untouchables. A murmur of disapproval rumbled through the audience because untouchables were not well liked. And then Dr. Shapati described his wretched boyhood in which he and his family were separated and segregated from the rest of the village. His widowed mother had to clean latrines all of her life to support the family, and young Shapati had to search the garbage heaps for food. That was the life of the untouchable class. He told how he was prohibited from attending the village school or even using the village well. And some angry voices in the audience shouted out that he had only experienced what karma had in store for him, what he had deserved as an untouchable. The surgeon quietly continued then telling about his eventual encounter with a kind mission doctor who had inspired him to become a doctor himself, an unthinkable dream. Dr. Shapati's journey into medicine took first steps forward and then it demanded years of tremendous toil and study but with the help of missionaries he finally graduated from college and medical school 
And he told in simple language that he felt he wanted to serve the Lord and his people, and so he became a Christian and a surgeon at Mirage Medical Center. And gazing out on the now silent audience, Dr. Shopati stood immobile for a time, then putting his palms together in the traditional Indian greeting. The noted Indian surgeon from the untouchables turned around to the major, bowed his head, and said, Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. What a witness. What a story of what God can do. And how when God comes to us and touches our lives and calls us, we are called to respond. So like the wise men and like Dr. Shapati, will you give your life to Christ this year? Oh, I know you've done it before, again and again and again, but will you give your life to Christ again this year and seek for God's divine kingdom in the midst of all the chaos that's going on out there, this worldly chaos, and give him your very best in whatever way God tells you to do so? regardless of the circumstances and regardless of the social cost. Let me close by saying also that what we do together as a congregation matters in the world. We are an outpost of heaven, the Bible says. We are an island of faith and uh, hope and joy and peace and love, right? That's who we are meant to be as a community for Jesus. And God calls all of us to be involved in this congregational life in whatever way we can. So, let me just make a pitch for next week. Our assembly next week is important. Um, and I know for many good reasons, there are people who won't be able to make next week. Scheduling or illness or they're taking care of someone who's ill. Understand all of that. But if you can come to the annual meeting next week, mount your camel, will you? Make your journey. Bring your potluck side dish or dessert for the meal. And then let's gather here and talk together about how God will use us as a congregation for kingdom work in 2022. In other words, let us all be magi, wise men and women in the kingdom of God. Amen and amen. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have given us a new year within which to serve you and we pray, O oh Lord, that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit, that you would make us wise and willing and able to be your servants, and that you would give us great things to do in the world for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time now, if you'll please rise and we'll sing the hymn, Be Thou My Vision.
while we confess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, give us in the new year eyes of faith to see your glory in the world. Renew our hearts by the gospel that we may focus our lives upon the spiritual kingdom that your Son continues to bring among us. Help us to value love more than self, eternity more than time, heaven more than earth, people more than things, and service more than success. Give us new and real opportunities for making a difference in the lives of other people, in our callings in life, and as the body of Christ in our neighborhood. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, give us in the new year hearts that are filled with the courage that comes from putting our trust in you. Give us courage to share the unsearchable riches of Jesus Christ with the world, lest Satan take all and Christ's kingdom come to naught. Give us courage to live righteously in an unjust world and to speak your word in the public square. Give us courage to face the constant threat of disease and death through each wave of COVID, living not as those who fear our life's end, but as those who yearn for life in your eternal presence. Strengthen our hearts by your Holy Spirit to shine like lights in the midst of the world's darkness. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, give us in the new year the holy desire to be more like Christ Jesus the Lord. Like the Magi, let us seek him faithfully and bring our lives to him as a reasonable offering in return for his life offered for us. Give us courage to overcome our sin. Help us to break out of our bad habits. Teach us to carefully examine the quality of our life of faith, lest we step aside from our journey with Jesus. Help us to be true disciples who hear and respond to the call of Christ to go make disciples of all people. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Heavenly Father, hear our prayer for the nations of the world, that in this new year they would begin to learn to beat their swords into plowshares and to find ways to cooperatively work together to make the world a safer, cleaner, and more healthy, hospitable place for all. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Heavenly Father, hear our prayer for our voters' assembly next week. Bless us as we gather, O oh Lord, not only in our fellowship, but in the decisions that we make, in the leaders we choose, and in the work, Lord, we place before us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Heavenly Father, God of all comfort, Keep us ever mindful of those around us who are grieving or despairing as they pass through troubled waters and walk through the fires of life. Keep both them and us fervent in prayer for your merciful help. And help, Lord, or, or reveal to us, O Lord, the greatness of your grace in the midst of our tribulations. Hear our prayer this day for Virginia DeSalvo and all who are suffering the COVID that they may receive a swift and complete healing from your holy hand. Be with Kristen and Marshall Edwards as they await their arrival of their child this week and preserve mother and child in the time of delivery. And hear our thanks that you were with Aaron and Rachel Whipper and brought safely forth their son Emmett this past week. Let their family bonds grow strong now as you shield these young couples with your heavenly love. 
Hear our prayer also, O Lord, for Jordan Martin as she goes to her surgery. Let this surgery, O Lord, be the end of seizures for her. Let her healing, O Lord, be swift and complete at the end of it. And strengthen this young woman, O Lord, and preserve her life and give her wonderful service in your kingdom in the years to come. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, your mercies are renewed every day as we put our trust in you. And through this holy sacrament, you renew us in faith and love with the promise of forgiveness as we fellowship with your Son. Let the holy communion we share with him now strengthen us for service in his name in the week to come. Lord, in your mer mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we command all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given in us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right and for our good benefit that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. <coughs> Sharing our life. <coughs> He lived among us to reveal your glory and love, that our darkness should give way to his own brilliant light. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Then after supper he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
body and blood of our Lord preserve you in the true faith to life everlasting. Amen. pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.